is a saying, and I know you've heard it before, treat me with respect and dignity. You know, your mother always tell you, or you might have heard it before, treat people the way you want them to treat you, no matter if they are behind bars. Let's get this party started. Come back to my channel. This is Patrice M. Foster. I'm so happy to be here, and I know it's been a long, long time. I've been busy working. I wanted to come out here because while I was sitting back working, at night I would go over the comments that you has written. So I happened to... I don't know how I missed this one, but there was a comment about correctional nursing. How do I advocate for my patients? Yes, they are patients to me. Treat them with respect and dignity. I try not to say inmates, offenders, predators, all those negative that surround it. First rule of thumb that I have been utilizing all my years in and out of correction, prison or jail, detention center, whatever you call it for you. I've always addressed, I'm gonna use both terms inmate, but normally I don't say inmate. I said, Mr. John, Mrs. Jones or Mistress Jones, whatever, or I might say, how do you like me to address you? I know, I know you may say, they're behind bars, they're criminal. Why do I have to give them respect and dignity? See, I don't look up their history. I don't want to know what their, their um, information is. As a matter of fact, you don't have to look at it. People are going to talk about it, but I try to walk away. I don't want anyone to cloud my decision. My job as a nurse is to treat everyone that come in contact, that rely on me to as a patient, and that's how I leave it. So the young lady was asking me, how do I advocate for my inmate? That's what she said. And I thought about that. And to be honest, I did not know how to answer it. But it was on my mind and on my mind. And the only best way I can say, and I think I responded, I said, since you were just started in, in the jail that you're going to work, I don't think you should think about advocating for your inmates right now. And the reason for my decision was I did not feel she was ready. You know, working in correctional, in corrections, it can't, you're surrounded with people who are, they're clever. Yeah. Behind the bars, they're clever. They're studying you. You may not think that they're studying you. They know every little inch of you. You may be talking normally to your coworker. They're listening. You think they're not listening? They're listening. And she might not know how to navigate it. They might spring a question. So I would think as a new nurse coming into correction, don't think about advocating in the way, I would say just hold off on that. But the question was baffling my mind and I was thinking about it. And so I wanted to come out here and talk about it. I thought, and I think that's what, how I 
perceive advocating for the inmates, advocating for the prisoners by giving them dignity and respect. Mr. John addressed them not as an offender, not as a, a preverb, but just address them. You evaluate them if they have issues. You don't stall if they say chest pain. You do what you should do as a nurse. If you feel that what you may be seeing may be incorrect, you addressed it with chain of command, you know, supervisor, charge nurse, whoever is in charge above you and let them deal with it. Put the ball in their hand. Let them deal with it if you're new. Don't go, and, and even if you're old, I learned that. Because you may think you're advocating for the patients. The type of patients that behind bar can use you as a, how should I say it? They know they're clever enough to play the staff against each other. So first, advocate for yourself. You're in a, um, I would say, a, a negative environment. So make sure when you go in there, you're confident in your skill, confident in how you perceive yourself, because everybody is watching you. I hate to say this, but it's true. If you like this channel, give me a thumbs up. Hit the notification bell. I encourage you to leave comments because I do read the comments. I respond and sometimes I may not respond. That's because I'm thinking, does this person need a video to explain it further? So your comments help me push me up, not only through the algorithm, I can't even pronounce that, but let you two know that I'm relevant. And I've been away, so my ratings has gone down. A lot of people have left. Come back home. Continue to watch the old videos. They're packed with information that may help you on your journey as a nurse. You know, a lot of people say advocate for your patients or patient advocates. You know, when they think of that, they're thinking of hospital setting. But we're talking about correction. How you advocate for your patient is still the same. You educate the prisoners about healthy lifestyle because, you know, the commissary is full of junk. <laughs> I, I see what they eat. So you have to advocate for your patient. I'll tell you, your patient is getting, I'm talking about psych now like 300 or high geodon medication, you need to advocate. And sometimes this may be missed by the doctor. You can always call the doctor in the building. And maybe the doctor is not there, the nurse practitioner is downstairs or wherever they sit and ask them, say, doctor, did you miss this? Because, you know, Mr. John has a high dose of geodine, maybe to help if you could give him a snack at night with the medication. The doctor can either say yes or no. So these are little things that you can advocate for your patient. You can also advocate with, I have a patient that is on dialing. He's not taking it, doesn't want it, but then he comes to me, Ms. Foster, I had a seizure last night. I don't know if it was a pseudo seizure or sometimes they call it fake seizure, but he said it was a seizure. But you're on medication and every night you change, you don't want it. You've been refusing it for years based on my history that I looked up. So you bring that attention to the doctor. So that when he goes in, he can evaluate it and see 
if you really need to have that land. Insure is another biggie. Insure the patient that is losing weight. You can just tell this person's not eating. He refuses every meal and he's just wasting away. You bring that attention because the doctor, if you're in a big prison, the doctor don't know what's going on. You are the eyes and the ears for the doctor and also for the patient. You can suggest, that's all. You're not diagnosing. You're just a nurse now. Don't forget, you can suggest to the doctor, do you think he may need insurance? Can you write an order if you think that? Can you evaluate him because he's losing so much weight? Can we start taking his weight? Da, da, da. You know what to do, nurse. That's some of the ways that we advocate for patients in a correctional setting. I feel that if you continue to give them respect, never use the word inmate or offenders or any other negative connotation towards the inmate. And the reason why I say don't look at their record, don't think about their records, don't wonder how, I wonder what they did. You know, oh, he gets on my nerves. He's so demanding. I wonder what he do. Well, I'm not going to give him anything. I'll tell you a story. Well, it's not a story. Just what happened to me. So, you know, in jail, prison, or correctional setting, the officer, you have to, I wouldn't say obey. I, there's another word I want to use, but they're, that's their jail. That's their prison. They know security. Don't overstep your bounds, and I never do. I let them lead me. And when it's appropriate, when it's medical, then I step in and say what I feel is right. So there was a, a inmate that he would take, he always asks for his medicine, he's not going to take his medicine. And if he opened, if they open the door, it's hard for him to get him to go back. And I think if the inmate has his hands in what they call a trap door, you can't, the officers can't push his hand back. You can't even touch him. That's, um, I guess that's illegal or that could be a lawsuit. So anyway, this particular inmate, he always asks for his medicine and you want to give him his medicine as a nurse. That's your responsibility, but you have to rely on the officer. So this particular incident, incident, I know when I give him the medicine, he's going to hold it and I can't get it back from him. Should we go in and get it? We can't do that as a nurse. And at this point, the, the officer cannot go in there alone. Shin said, if I give him a snack, he'll take his medicine. I want him to take his medicine. He already had a snack and he ate it. So I made the decision, let's try him. Let's, let me give him his, a snack and see if he'll take the medicine. The officer said, because he was a little agitated still because he doesn't get this and he want this and he want medicine that he doesn't have an order for. The officer said, I'm not going to open the trap. I'm not, he's not getting the medicine today. I have to listen because the way he's acting, if she's, op she, he, officer, open the trap, open the door, it's going to be a fight. It's going to be an altercation. It's going to be danger. And she's, the officer is by himself. And I, I can't 
control this man. That's not my job. And so she can't do it alone. She has to go to the chain of command, maybe her boss, maybe um the sergeant, lieutenant, somebody else, because he's so agitated, you don't know what could happen. This incident where it back in when I was in California, Santa Rita, where they went into the cell, even though they handcuffed the, the inmates. Yeah, I got to get it out, but you're learning that don't make that mistake. Offenders, <laughs> me, I just made that mistake. I'm the offender now. Anyway, the the patient was handcuffed and the patient was, the officer went in the cell alone, open, and he was able, even though he was handcuffed, he was able to beat her up bad. So the rule is they need to have like two person, maybe two or three, when the patient is extremely agitated. And when I say agitated, I'm on the psych floor, so forensic floor, so they are extremely agitated. So the decision was not to open it and I had to comply, which I understand. So he didn't get that medicine that particular night. I can justify why. And if it's up to my boss, I, I wrote up a uh, nurse's note on that. Now you may say, why didn't I advocate for the patient? He needs to take his medicine. You have to see, you have to learn to know when it is appropriate because I know he was coming after me or after somebody else, which is the officer. Yes, they come off a nurse too. A lot of people say, oh, they love the nurse. They don't do no, do uh, no harm to the nurse. Don't let your guards down. That's all I can say about that one. So, the best way to advocate for your patient in correctional setting, keep giving them the respect like they're the patient in the hospital. Mr. Jones, Mrs. Stevenson. They might say, like the, when I work with the kids, hey, grandma, don't call me that. My name is Stacy. Stacy, then you just say Stacy. You never let anyone trigger you. They're going to say all kind of words about you when you don't give them the sandwich when they're not supposed to have it. They'll call you all the names in the book. But you continue to give them respect. You evaluate the situation. If a patient say, oh, I'm having a seizure, don't sit at the desk and say, oh, no, you're not having a seizure, and don't go check. Or chest pain. Miss Foster, I'm having, because, see, he respected me. He said, Miss Foster, I'm having a chest pain. So I have to give the same respect. Don't listen to what other people are telling you. Oh, you don't have, he's just a offender. He's not dead. You know, you do your part. You do your part the right way. And the outcome will be better. Every chest pain, even though, even though I may think in my mind, to be honest, I think sometimes they just say it because they want to get off the floor. In my mind, I'm thinking that. Yes, I'm thinking like everybody else. But I have to do it. I have to call the doctor. I have, we have to check the patient. There's been incident on incident at a particular prison here in Georgia that I'm hearing on the news that they went in and the person was dead. They went in and the person said that he was depressed. Ah. He went up on top of the, um, it's like a tear, and jump. And he was hurting and screaming. You know the inmate, they ignore him. They're not going to help. And he's screaming for the officer and nobody came to his rescue. 
The camera showed him crawling, crawling in the cell because he couldn't walk. He fell, and when they finally, an officer noticed him, and that was the officer with a heart, got him out, got him to medical. He went straight. I'm reading this. When I was in California, they were telling me about this story, and I read it a little bit. They took him to the hospital and he broke every bone you can think of in his legs. And when he was crawling, he was in a lot of pain. He was screaming. But because he's, what I say, a repeat offender, meaning this is the person that say what they say, um, always calling, I am in this, I'm in that. And you ignore it because they do it every day, do it, and nothing, when you go, there's nothing. But this one particular day, they happen to do it, and you brush it off. Oh, I'm not going there. He's doing it. He did that last night. He did that yesterday. Nothing wrong with him. But to this time, something was wrong. So you got to be very careful. And I'm mixing that because... You never know what they, one that calls wolf, they say, all the time, you ignore it. And when the right time you ignore it, it's going to cost you your job. See, so just be very careful. Nurses now, if you're new in correction, my only advice to you is step back. Watch the scene, you know, observe the nurses you're working with, your surrounding, and just go with the flow. You will find your comfort level. You will find the people that you can vibe with, that you have a little trust in, that will guide you through the way. Pick somebody. Don't go there thinking, oh, it's a men paradise. So many times on the news, what do you hear? The nurse, they go into prison, and where they see a lot of men, and they go crazy, and end up, they end up in, um, right there, in booking, I should say. Another question, another comment was asking me about, you know, when the patient, you know, asks her to do something to that effect. An example is, she said, she was trying to give out medication and the patient asks her, could you please, my, my celly in room 24 has my book. Could you get it and bring it? Would you do that? No, they wouldn't ask me that because I'm not bringing no book. I'm not passing no notes. I'm, I'm directing them, and that's what you need to do. Just ignore that question if you don't know what to do. Ignore it and keep on doing your medication. Somebody did that, though. Somebody didn't get the memo or did not. Maybe she didn't get the orientation that that is a contraband. You never pass, they'll test you. And that's what I answer in the comment. That's what's your little test to see how far you can keep their secret. And they're going to keep at you, keep at you. And before you know, you are in booking. Not as a nurse. You know what I mean. Someone, a nurse, She's been working this so long, so I don't understand how she got caught up in this. The, the patient asks her, can you pass a note over to, you know, or what's the name, uh, the exact, had a sandwich, can you pass it for me? It could be things in the sandwich. It could be codes in the letter that you're passing. 
You don't know what's in that. Why would you take it and give it, move to step door and give it to it? I have even see a situation where, and the officer was so upset. And I was worried for that nurse. I don't know what happened because I didn't stay there. I was just a travel nurse. I didn't stay there long. The officer was furious. The nurse went to give medication and nobody, and the officer wasn't with her. You never do that. I'm telling you how they can play the staff. They can fill you out and they can do little things to test you. Test you. See if you can do bigger things for them. Be very careful. I know I'm not trying to scare you. And as a new nurse, you might be saying, oh, I don't want to work in the prison. I don't want to work in the jail because I'm scared. I'm saying, walk in with confidence. Faint. You're going to do all right. You just do the right thing. And you know what's the right thing. If you act nervous, they can see you. They're going to curse you. You're used to people cursing you. If you're not, then you're going to have to buckle down and ignore it. I want you to succeed if that's what you want. I want you to succeed. Some people might not like it. Correction is not for everyone. But you need to keep yourself safe. And by safety, I mean the officers are there for your safety. Don't overstep and think that you're in charge. You're in charge when it comes to medication, when it comes to medical issues about your patient. But when it comes to security, that's when you should draw the line. You listen and observe. They've been there for years and years. They know. They know the inmates. And that's why I rely on them for my safety. I want to walk out that door and come back every day safe. So that's my little tip. Treat them with respect and dignity, regardless of what. If they say, don't call me Mr. John, if they say, don't call me Mrs. Jones. Patient. Use that word, patient. Patient. It's acceptable. Have a 